What is up my dudes? It's Pac-Man here and today I wanted to bring you guys a video that a lot of you guys have been asking for in one way or another. Um, I, I often get in my chat people saying like, how do you know what operators you need to bring for a specific bomb site? Or you know, when someone in my team says, hey, we need a smoke or we need a Jaeger, or, we need a Valk um, or something along those lines, like how do you know what you're missing? Right, and keep in mind that there is no specific five operators that are gonna be 100% effective on each and every bomb site. Every bomb site's a little bit different and some operators are gonna be stronger than others. Uh, but there are some general principles that you should be following. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can just kind of clear this up for all of you so that you know what you need to bring on both attack and defense. Um, and yeah, you, you won't be you won't be finding yourself missing out on operators when it's uh, when it's a crucial 3-3 overtime. Okay, but really quickly before we hop in, I just have a quick word from today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Rhino Shield. This is their new collection of officially licensed Rainbow Six Siege phone cases by Ubisoft. The collection includes a massive variety with over 50 different cases to choose from for both your iOS and Android devices, even AirPod cases too. The guys over at Rhino Shield were nice enough to send me out a whole bunch of them to try out, and I have to say they really do live up to the high expectations. I'm personally going to be running with this black sledge design. If you're an iPhone user, be sure to check out their super customizable Mod NX cases, where you can swap out different designs to your liking. One of the other cool things about these cases is that they come with extreme impact protection up to 11 feet. So if you pair it up with one of their shatterproof 3D impact screen protectors, you'll never need to worry about smashing your phone again. They also have a great lifetime replacement program. So if your case has any issues, they'll send you out a brand new one. To get your hands on one of these Rainbow Six Siege cases or to check out their other collections, be sure to follow the link in the description to go straight through to their website. And for a short time, they're going to be giving you a further 20% off purchases when you use code PACMAN. Be sure to check them out, guys. Cool. So thank you once again, Rhino Shield, for helping support the channel. You guys should definitely check them out. All right, so hopping straight in, um, we're going to start with uh, defense first, right? So I've got one, two, three, four, five, uh, sub, and then band. So we're going we're gonna to assume some obvious bands. Uh, subs are just, this is basically just where all the defenders are going to sit. So these are kind of your flex, like what you can swap in and out. Um, and then one, two, three, four, five is just your standard operator lineup. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do first, right, is I'll just show you a general uh, base lineup that will, will work for most sites, okay? So if you go something like a Jaeger, um, it's an absolute, absolutely essential. You have to have some form of utility denial. You have to be able to uh, stop the grenades, stop the flashes, hold power positions, right? So you need a Jaeger for the most part. You can bring a Wamai in replacement, but like they, they work better in cohesion together, right? And, and Jaeger just... Um, yeah, he's very strong. It's basically a must pick. Um, then you're going to be looking at a smoke. Okay, so again, I'm just going to show you a basic operator lineup that will work for the most part. Um, and you can, you know, swip and swap, change these guys up. Um, but we'll go with the smoke. Uh, obviously, his his ability, is, uh, his uh, utility is huge. The, the smoke gas canisters can waste so much time, a combined time of 45 seconds, if not get you a frag. Um, absolutely essential. The SMG-11 is solid. He brings a deployable shield, which goes well with Jaeger's ADSs. Um, and then he's got the shotgun for the rotates, right? And the lines of sight. So um, a smoke is, is a super, super strong operator, and, and you can't ever really deny it. Um, and I actually haven't gone through the bands really quick, so what I would be banning or what I'm, what I'm going to assume is if it, it's just a, I'm just going to assume a basic ban right of um, of Echo and Mira. Okay, so with that, they're probably the two most commonly banned uh, defenders. So we'll just assume they're banned for now. And, you know, if they're not banned, you really should be bringing them on most bomb sites. Occasionally, there won't be room for Mira. She's not as strong, uh, but they're, they're usually banned anyway. So we'll just stick with that for now. All right, so we've now got the Jaeger, we've got the smoke. Next, you want some form of uh, denial, right? So you want to you want to have something to kind of stop the uh, the enemies from just hard breaching as they please, right? So right now, the best for that is probably Cade. Okay, so let's say you go with the Cade. So now we've got the Jaeger, we've got the smoke, and we've got the Cade for denial. Okay, so next up, um, really, like, the, you kind of put Maestro down here in the same bracket as Echo Mira. Um, just because he, he's just incredibly strong, like his ability to, you know, have that information, uh, to be able to see through the smoke uh, when they're going for a plant, the ability to actually kill someone off a plant. Uh, he's got the Alda, it's extremely powerful. He, overall, like he's just, he's a very, very strong operator. And uh, I feel like a lot of people 
don't give him the credit that he used to get uh, when he had the ACOG, but maybe that's just me. But Maestro is definitely one of those operators that if someone picks Maestro on defense, don't tell him to get off. Like, sure, yeah, Maestro, extremely powerful. You know what I mean? Like, he, he again, works well with um, Jaeger's ADSs. You can pair up uh, that with the shield, um, you know, behind the shield. So there's just so much utility they have to burn to try and get to the Maestro, uh, to the uh, Evil Eye. Uh, so Maestro is definitely one that you kind of, you, you're probably going to want there, right? Um, and for the most part, then you kind of have a flex here. Uh, so really, the more information, the better. Uh, you can go with uh, either gaining information, <clears throat> excuse me, so you can go with either gaining information, uh, like, you know, bring maybe a Valk, uh, you could bring a Lesion potentially, uh, you could bring a Maluzi, she's extremely powerful at the moment, uh, you could bring uh, a Mute to deny, uh, drone information, right? And you can maybe swap them out for the smoke. Let's say you can bring a mute. I'll just pop them in. So we'll go lesion. Uh, we'll go well, my again, really powerful. Uh, Maluzi, extremely broken at the moment, to be honest. She's almost a must pick. Um, you can bring the pulse. It's quite situational, but you can bring the pulse, a bandit, if you need to trick, but you've already got the cave. But if you really want to double down, you can do that. You can bring in the, the clash. You can bring in the castle. It's a flex, right? You can kind of pick whatever you want, and it's going to be determined by the specific bomb site and, you know, the you know whether or not you're in a five stack, if you're solo queue or, or what's going on. Um, but it's kind of a flex, right? So if you had these four operators and then any one of these five, uh, sorry, one, <laughs> five, any one of these eight operators, you know, it, it, that's that's a solid lineup. You know, you can bring the Vigil there as well, the Muzzy, you can bring the Dock for that extra fragging capability. Um, there's, there's plenty you can do, right? But if you have an operator lineup like this, you, you're gonna be pretty solid uh, for the most part on any, on any bomb site, right? Now, you can start to swap them up you know, you could go, okay, we don't actually need the Cade or the Smoke because we're going to bring the Mute. The Mute's going to bring the Shotgun. It's going to bring the Wall Denial. Now that frees up another spot, right? So you could bring maybe Double Shotgun. Maybe you do want to bring Double Shotgun so you can still have Smoke's utility. Or maybe you want to go, okay, let's go double down on, let's, let's replace Smoke's Shield with um, Wamaya's Shield and pair it up with uh, Jaeger's ADS, right? Because you really do want a Shield on most bomb sites. Um, and then here, you've already got the information with Maestro, so we'll get rid of them, get rid of them, and we'll play the Maluzi. So you've got a Jaeger, uh, Wamai, Mute for Smoke, uh, for Denial, and for Shotgun and Rotates. Then you've got the Maluzi again for, for just just the, the ability to just shut down an attack and really throw things off. And you also get the information, the sound cue when she's there. Um, so do you kind of get where I'm coming from this? Like, you need to have, basically... Jaeger's always going to be there. You're always going to have a Jaeger because he's just so powerful. Then you need to bring some form of wall denial. So you need to make it a little bit tricky for the enemies to just sh like stroll straight through. Because let's assume that Thatcher's banned. Right, so we'll go with a Thatcher ban. And uh, who, 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 who should we make the other one? Should we make the other one Blackbeard, YOLO? So we'll go with a Thatcher and Blackbeard ban. Or Jackal's probably more commonly banned, right? So Thatcher and Jackal Bam, um, you don't you want to make them pay for the Thatcher Bam. So you want to make it as difficult as possible for them to open the wall. So you always want to bring some form of denial to just make it a little bit trickier, make them have to go out of the way to to get it open. Nine times out of ten, they're gonna get attackers are gonna get whatever they want to get open. They're gonna get it open. Nine times out of ten, right? It's just about slowing them down and burning down that clock, right? Making them have to coordinate and think uh, about how they can get rid of it, or you know, having to drone out a specific area. Area so that as Ophia can go underneath and impact to get rid of the mute jammer or whatever. You're just trying to make it as uncomfortable as possible. So you always want to have some form of denial, okay? And then you've kind of got, um, you need to have the information, you need to have some form of plant denial, right? So Maestro is really good for that because it kind of runs the double. You've got the C4 here on uh, Maluzi or the impacts, whatever you prefer. You've got the C4 on Maluzi, you've got the C4 on uh, on mute, and then you've got Wamaya's shield to hold down power positions, like like if you're holding Attic on Oregon, um, or something like that, right? So once you've once you've got <clears throat> protection in the form of Jaeger's ADSs, you've got rotates, you've got plant denial, you've got uh, again, you can double down with information, so you bring in information, you can kind of start to flex your team around, right? But let's say if the operator lineup was was looking more like this, right? What if the operator lineup was like that? Do you see, do you see an issue with that operator lineup? The issue is that there's nothing to stop grenades, so there's nothing to stop, 
you know, ash charges or anything like that. They can just strip away any utility that's there, that's there and really do as, do as they please. Um, so in this situation, you'd say, yeah, we need a Jaeger. We need a Jaeger. Who's not important here? Uh, really any of them. Any of these five can be replaced uh, because Maestro can do the rotates. You know, Maluzi's not overly important. Neither's Pulse. Like, neither's the Muzzy unless you're going for the double drone denial. Uh, but someone has to go. So maybe you just swap that out. You bring in the Jaeger. Now it's looking better. Now you're going for, like, maybe a Rome heavy approach with Mute and uh, Muzzy, right? So that's kind of the general concepts. Let's say you did have the Jaeger, but you had... This was your lineup. Let's say the lineup was uh, Valk, um, Bandit, and Duck. Let's say that was the lineup. Do you see an issue with this lineup? The issue with this lineup is that aside from C4s, there's no rotate ability. Now, Maluzi could swap out to Impacts, uh, and fair enough, yeah, that, that might work. You get two rotates, but. You, you don't have rotate freedom. You're going to have to start using C4s for the most part. And that can really cost you around as well. So you, you, you stick into those general principles. You can flex around them as long as you kind of have the general things that you need done. You need the ability to create rotates. You need something to deny plant in default locations. You need information on where, the, where they're coming from, when they're, where, you know, what, what, what's, where they're going to be planting, etc. You need that information to act upon. Uh, you need something to stop there. You need ADS, like ADSs. You need utility defense, right? You need, for the most part, you need a shield. Like this operator lineup doesn't have a shield, and that can also make it kind of difficult if you don't give them a shield to have to, you know, deal with uh, for the most part. You need denial for the hard breach. You just need those four or five foundations, those principles, right? And they can be covered with two or three operators, and then you're kind of free to free to flex into whatever you want. But if you're missing any one of those key components um you're gonna be in trouble like for the most part there you know if you don't bring the denial they're just gonna open things up straight away and you're immediately gonna be pinched on site and they're threatening and execute they're threatening threatening a plant straight away you don't have the ads's they're just gonna you know ying or maybe not necessarily ying she's not brought too often but they're just gonna spam flash they're gonna remove any of the shields you have they'll take out everything <clears throat> they'll really do as they please um you don't have the information not as important um, but in the same way you don't have the information, it can be very hard to, to understand what sort of a push they're going for. So make sure you have those general uh, foundations covered when you're on defense and you'll put yourself in a strong position to take out the round. All right, beautiful. So moving on to the attackers, we're gonna run it in the same sort of format. Um, so we're gonna assume that there is a Thatcher and a Jackal ban. They're, they're probably, again, the two most common um, bans. Obviously they do change up and flex a little bit, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume those bans and then we're gonna have a look at just a kind of a base operator lineup that will work for the most part. Okay, so when you're looking at um, attacking from most sites, from most sites anyway, um, in an ideal world, you're gonna have two hard breach right, so that you're not all, all eggs and in one basket, right, so you're going to bring the ace and you're going to bring the maverick, okay, so if you don't know how to maverick trickle wall, reinforce wall open, where you're um, drawing basically two lines, one above, one on the top, one on the bottom, so that it then becomes a soft wall, you really need to learn that because it's a super, super important trick, um, and it basically just says go away to any sort of wall uh, denial, <laughs> uh, you can get whatever you want open, right, so you're going to bring uh, the ace and the maverick so that you can do split pushes, um, then you're going to want to bring two soft breaches, right? Two soft breaches and, and preferably some nades. And that's why Maverick's so good is that, um, you know, no, nothing can really deny a Maverick uh, aside from potentially, you know, throwing a smoke, doing a smoke glitch. Uh, but for the most part, nothing can deny a Maverick. So you've got the Maverick there for, uh, for hard breach, but he also then brings a nade uh, for, you know, taking out shields or taking out Maestro cams, Maluzi, uh, Banshees or whatever you need to take out. So you're going to bring the double soft breach in the form of um, Zofia and Ash. If you need a little bit of vertical play, you can bring breach charges um, on, you know, the Zofia. Uh, I'd always I'd always run stuns on the ash just to be able to burn the utility. Um, and then I would also, you know, potentially look at bringing in an IQ. Now, this doesn't give you a whole lot of, um, a whole lot of, uh, like, you know, what am I trying to say, of, of things to burn ADSs, so flashes and stuff. You've got, what, three on uh, Ash, three flashbangs, you've got two nades, you've got four projectiles, so it's, it's that's what, that's nine. Um, so that will clear out all three ADSs. Yeah, you've got two smokes there as well, so you might be okay, especially if IQ can get it. Um, where she needs to go, but you know, maybe you actually do want a little bit more and maybe you could consider going 
uh, thermite to uh, ace to thermite to bring the flashbangs. But I'd say just for the most part, right? Or you could even bring the Habana. For the most part, we'll just say that this is this sort of an operator lineup will work. Uh, you know, for the most part, okay? And the reason is, is because you've got the ability to detect um, Valcams. You can see what sort of utility you're going up against in IQ. She's just, she's just a strong operator, right? Um, you've got double soft breach in the form of uh, Ash and Zofia. So if you need to take out Maestro Cam, you need to take out Shields, you need to go underneath and, and clear things out or whatever it is you need to do, you've got double soft breach. Uh, and then you've got double hard breach so that you can do split pushes. Again, if you want to refer back to Oregon, you can have one, uh, you know, maybe a Zofia and a Maverick going um, across to Big Tower. Uh, to open up the attic wall and then you can have the ace Zofia and IQ working master trophy side to get open that generator wall right um so this sort of a this sort of a lineup is going to it's going to be fine for the most part okay so what let, let's say they're not necessarily bringing a valk a whole lot right they're not bringing they're not really bringing a valk so what you could potentially do is you could get rid of the IQ there um and swap it out for maybe a nomad to lock off flanks and this is still fine. This, this, you're not missing out on any key components here, right? You know, I see. Um, I can't remember what. It's one Latin American team. Um, they, I don't know. I don't think they run the Zofia and they bring the Finca instead, which is weird in my opinion. But you know, it is what it is. Everyone's their own. But they bring the they bring the Zofia, All right? And you can you can do that because you're kind of you're still bringing that. Um, you're still bringing that. Maybe that's when Thatcher's in play though but they're still bringing that ability to remove utility with the nades, right? So you, you, you're not you're not falling down on hard breach. You're not falling down on soft breach. You've got grenades um, and then you've got flanks locked off here. Really, it's like, you know, you can't go wrong with some form of these four. Yeah, so you can swap that out and bring in a thermite. You could even, let's say, just like that. So any, any of those four, a mixture of those four, two of them, for the most part, you can't go wrong. Sophia and Ash, like as much as people, you, you could potentially swap one out for, for Sledge um, or Buck, you know, something like that to add a little bit more vertical play or guaranteed vertical play. I'd probably be bringing the, it depends on what site, you know, because uh, Buck is really good for that up, upward um, vertical where Sledge doesn't, you know, bring anything to the table there, but he does have the, um, he does have the grenades. Now Buck also has flashbangs for utility removal, but uh, but yeah, that's a that's a that's a different conversation. So you could go something like that. Maybe you could go this. So you could go sledge, you could go sledge ash, um, thermite. Like if if you had this sort of a lineup, uh, boom. And then who would be the last? But like, like even a Cali, right? So if you had a lineup like that, there's nothing wrong with that lineup. That works. That lineup works because you've got the ability to remove utility where needed in power positions you have the ability to open up reinforced walls um, to deal with you know uh denial so to deal with cage tricks for hatches um and different things like that so that utility works right so what's, what's he doing in there um so that utility works so does that so does that original one that i that i spoke with now let's uh do the same thing i did there before so let's say you've got an operator lineup um something like this you've got blackbeard and Twitch, because everyone loves Twitch, right? Let's get rid of that. Now, uh, what's wrong with this um, form of lineup? Your main issue here is that there's no hard breach, right? So you've got nothing to, yeah, open up reinforced walls. Now, there are certain maps where not bringing hard breach is more acceptable than others, like let's say Coastline. Like Coastline, for the most part, you can get away without bringing hard breaches. It's probably the only map like that, in my opinion. Um, you can get away with not bringing hard breaches. It, it can still help uh, for certain portions of the map to, to have hard breach, but it's one of those maps that it's not overly necessary. Whereas, let's say Oregon, you don't bring uh, if you don't bring hard breach on Oregon, basically any three, any three or four of the bomb sites, like you, you basically lost the round if the team's doing what they need to do. You know, if they know that, because you're gonna have to funnel through doorways and hallways. Um, so the the issue with a lineup like this is there's just no hard breach, right? Now let's see if I can concoct something different here. It's gonna be difficult, but let's 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 see what we can do. So let's say we bring Ace. We bring. Hmm. Yeah, the attackers are pretty pretty well lined up for the most part. You can't go too wrong as long as you've got the hard breach and then something to deal with. Um, something to deal with the wall. I'm trying to see which ones are fun. Which ones do people use? 
like you could say you could say potentially you know without a nomad what are you going to do for flanks but like i just don't really agree with that i think drones can be used for flanks but if you want to lock something off um more effectively you can bring the gridlock of the the nomad if, if flanks is something that you are really susceptible to but for the most part as long as you have the ability to remove utility to take out um, you know, to take out uh, evil eyes, to take out shields, to burn ADSs, to remove power positions, to go underneath and, and strip away utility that's denying a wall from being breached. Um, plus you have the ability to actually breach that wall. As long as you've got those things, you're laughing, right? Like you can bring the, you can even bring the Yana for extra information. You know, I see that a lot in Pro League these days. And for the most part, these tips aren't about competitive play. These tips are trying to trying to help you guys understand just the core principles of operator lineups, right? And to make sure that it all works in cohesion. So just think about on any given bomb site, like, is this gonna work? Do we have what we need here? Can we open the walls? Do we need to open the walls for one? Secondly, can we open the walls? Um, do we have enough enough things to burn out utility? Like, is 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 uh, you know, is the is the vertical an option, or can we play vertically? Those those are the things that you need to you need to be asking yourself going into an attacking lineup. Um, for the most part, you're going to be fine. But if you're not bringing the Nomad or the Gridlock, you need to be more conscious of those um, flanks. You know, maybe you can bring the Claymore on Zofia if it's a if if you're thinking that it's going to be a. Um, yeah, well, you got the buck. So in a lineup like this, you could bring the you could bring the claymore, and that's going to help with the, the flank watching. Uh, but really, you're going to have to be conscious of that. And you're going to have to set up drones so that if someone dies, they can, you know, actively watch through all the flanks. Or you know, even when some when all five are still alive, um, you can still just have someone sitting on drones and flicking between them to, to just watch flanks so that they don't have to actually watch it hard with the gun, and they can watch multiple. So you just need to make sure that you've got your bases covered. Uh, but for the most part, you can't go really too wrong as long as you've got utility removal, hard breach, and then you can kind of flex with whatever you'd like. So there you have it, guys. Those are the basic general principles for operator selection and uh, basically just operator lineups. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding as to what you need to be looking for. And if you spot gaps in your operator uh, selection and lineup, you can either fill that gap or you could say, hey, uh, you know, we need a Maverick or something along those lines, right? Um, and understanding this is just, you know, it's not gonna go, you're not gonna just take this video and go, oh, now I know everything, now I'm the best. No, but it's gonna save you from leaving yourself in a really sticky situation where you go, oh, now we're in this map and there's nothing we can do about it. We have to funnel through a door. You never want that, right? Or we've nothing to do with this shield. Etc. Right. Um, so hopefully this gives you that basic understanding that you need to now go and apply that into your rank matches and comp play or whatever it is that you're going to do. Uh, once again, guys, thank you very much to uh, Rhino. Big thank you for supporting the channel and supporting this video. Uh, be sure to check out the link in the description and don't forget to use code Pacman for a further 20% off. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe and just drop a comment down below and, and let me know if you like this style of video. I haven't done one of these in a while and I've enjoyed it. It's actually been fun. I, I sort of want to get back to more of this. So. Uh, uh, yeah, let me know if, if you want to see more of it or if you like this style of video. Uh, but without wasting too much of your time, dudes, I will see you in the next one. Peace.